This is Byron Gordon for the SES Conference channel, and we are at SES San Francisco Connected Marketing Week, day three. The 140 characters conference exploring the state of now just kicked off, and we just recently heard from Peter Hirschberg uh, with the Gray Area Foundation for the Arts. Peter, you talked uh, in your 15-minute uh, presentation about the way uh, cities are using data to transmit uh, information. I found it fascinating. I thought maybe you could share a little bit with our viewers a few of the examples yeah. uh, that you highlighted. One of them uh, was a trash tag. Maybe summarize a little bit. What was the significance yeah. of that? You know, so often when we think about things like Twitter, uh, we think about what people are saying. But it turns out what our devices tell us about ourselves says a lot uh, because we're creating so many sensors in the world around us. So we took a look at the world of sensors uncensored. So, for example, uh, we featured at the Gray Area Foundation recently 15 projects that MIT did. One was a project called Trash Track where they tagged several thousand pieces of garbage with a little radio transmitter and threw them out. Everything from a teddy bear to Starbucks cap to old monitors. And then they watched as these things transmitted over the cellular network for months where they went, revealing the reverse supply chain, something you never see, something the garbage industry barely knows. You could find that, that you know some trash went right close to the dump and other trash took a longer route. You, you could start to learn maybe who was following the rules and who weren't. You could start to tell people who were throwing things out, did you know where your trash was going? It rendered visible something we didn't really understand before. But there's data everywhere. Our cell phones transmit so much stuff. After all, the phone network knows where the phones are, um, how quickly they're going. So we showed a project called New York Talk Exchange, which on the one hand is beautiful. Uh, it was in the Museum of Modern Art with this wonderful visualization of how New York City talks to the world through IP, through cell phone data. But MIT researcher Francisca Roja has done her thesis on what does this tell us about the city. And it turns out that New Yorkers call the Dominican Republic more than anywhere else because it's such an immigrant city. And it turns out that the globalization story isn't just about fancy companies. It's about individuals and families and mothers abroad who are raising their kids over a phone line. And all of this stuff kind of sits in the data. And you can use that in other ways. For example, M MIT did a project called Real Time Rome where they looked at data coming out of cell phones in Rome and by doing math, they could figure out how quick the phones were moving. And by mashing them up and mapping them to transport systems, you could see who was walking out of the train station slowly and who was hopping the bus. So you get all this stuff kind of feeding back for traffic purposes. And you not only can get the data in, which is, of course, in the real-time web world, there is plenty of data. But then the question is, how do you start feeding it back? So we showed uh, Christine Otram's project, uh, the Copenhagen wheel, which is a hybrid bicycle wheel. So it makes it easier to go around because it captures 50% of the energy. That means because this wheel is kicking back energy, it's gathering up, San Francisco's hills would be half as big, LA would be half as long. But because it's on a network, it can do things like tell you where are your friends and did you cross their path. Um, it can gather traffic and pollution data in real time. So here's a thing on the internet that makes such a difference. And what I find exciting about this is what we in the tech world think of DIY energy or you know hacking, developer, using APIs, this bottoms up, let's build it thing, is going on in cities as well. Because cities aren't just top down what the government says, it's what activists and urban planners and, and people with design ideas do. And they, by using these tools, they can do it. And at the Gray Area Foundation for the Arts, we see this kinship and energy between artists, developers, and urban people. And that's what we were talking about today. And it's the nature of a collaboration between ourselves uh, and IBM that has a Smarter Planet initiative and MIT to continue to explore this and make it a big part of the real-time web conversation. So we're, we're starting to live, in, or the, the launch of the era of the smart city, uh, using technology to um, achieve means uh, that uh, will help uh, uh, save energy or cut costs. Right. So, I mean, the applications of this are, you know, clearly um, with a smart grid, you can save energy, you can use energy at the time when it's most appropriate, you can 
you can figure out the most efficient things or even have some devices feed energy back into the rib. So it's great for that. It's amazing for traffic, right, health care. So there's lots of real applications of it. One way of thinking about it is cities have always been built on networks. We've always had the, the great aqueducts that brought in the water or the road networks. But, and these have been physical big things. Now all of these networks that look ephemeral, because it's just data, in fact, are incredibly powerful, cost-effective ways to build a better world. And citizens can be involved, because they can kind of look over the shoulder with open government data and be part of it. And in fact, like so many movements, if we aren't part of it, if citizens aren't part of it, it probably won't go nearly as well. So if citizens uh, want to do their part, um, they need to uh, uh, take a look and see what their cities are doing and contact their own city governments and find out what uh, web pages or websites the city has created to help them track this type of well, uh, there are, information? You know, there are a couple of ways. One is a lot of cities now have open government data. So, for example, uh, San Francisco has a has, in, in New York and Chicago and, and the U.S. government have lots of open government, you know, where you literally go on. You don't have to contact the city. Like any API thing, you just have to, like, plug in and, and start working with the data. Uh, but also, if you are kind of a hacker, creative, or artist type, there are increasing ways to come together to kind of create projects. So if you go to our site, the Gray Area Foundation for the Arts, and it's gaffda.org, you can see a program we did called City Center. So a few months ago, we, the Berkeley School of Information, San Francisco State, and KQED, sponsored a program where people all over the Tenderloin built projects and explored. So one put noise sensors all over the Tenderloin to figure out where was the noise pollution, who was being kept up at night. So it was literally a real-time thing. Others were interested in gathering the stories from out throughout the Tenderloin. So I think there, there's a lot of opportunity for the do-it-yourself kind of development movement uh, to start taking on real things, in other words, not just kind of talking to smartphones and data networks, but in the actual built space of a city. And then these collaborations, I think, can be very helpful and hopeful, and that's what we're thinking about. Thanks so much for chatting with us, yeah. Peter. Thanks. And there's more to come from Connected Marketing Week here in San Francisco. Stay tuned for more.